day, we didn't get a lot of high level people in emergency services, there was people there, but not that top level, not that many. How do we reach them? So I think that's that's disappointing. Uh, one of the things that I've done is uh, in other work and looking at civilian organisation banks and law firms and um, and other organisations is to really work with the CEO. So this issue is a leadership issue. If it's not being led by the most senior person in the organisation, then it won't have traction. And one of the ways that I ensure that it is those CEOs that attend the meeting is that. Um, you're not able to send a delegate. I've said no delegates allowed. Um, if you don't come, your voice is not represented. And I have to say from having 25 of the most uh, busiest men in the country, from the head of a treasury to the head of Qantas and Woolworths to the head of a military, um, those men make time because this is a priority. Uh, and if they don't come, they recognise that their views won't be represented at all. So it has to start at the top. Yeah, I understand that, but you are you, you are Liz, you can mm. call this. Mm. And you can't be everywhere all the time. Mm. How do we how do we engage these senior people? I mean Craig's on board, but how how do we get further with those senior people? Well, I think it's very much about engaging the head and the heart. You've got to lift it up in their priorities because they're all busy people. How do you do that? For me it is about um, helping those leaders have some kind of experience that will bring it up on their list of priorities. And the work that I've done with the uh, uh, military was very much about taking the stories of people, talented individuals who had had, um, you know, who, who loved their organisation but they had paid an unacceptable price for participation. Now those stories weren't to be told by me, they were to be told by the individuals themselves. So that really raises the second issue, how do you create the safe space to tell stories? Um, and I think that's critical that organisations do that. And that's about leaders stepping in and making it safe for others to tell their story. And there's a number of things that, that you need to do. Thank you. Now, so how, how do we advance gender equity? What's your advice? I think for the reasons I think that it's been slow to date is firstly that we all have our gender schemas, that's the way we think about the place of men and women and often we think in a very traditional way and when we ask people to embrace gender diversity in organisations that's at odds with what our gender schema, our emotional belief system is telling us. So what I um, hope to do to advance it is to get people to reach out for the stories, to see a different future, one where men and women share power, and to understand that that's a future that needs to be open to all. But not only that, it will create the most high-performing organisation, and an inability to move in that direction means that your organisation will become less and less relevant over time. Part of the reason for that is that over 50% of the talent pool of this country is female. Um, if women aren't represented and at the senior levels in organisations, um, then you haven't got the best talent. You just haven't. So what's in it for men? What's in it for men is very much about when we have more equal organisations, when we have more equal societies, all the research shows that that's when everyone flourishes. So men do better, women do better, our children do better. Um, that's what's in it for men. And, you know, most men don't sit in isolation to women. Um, you know, where it's not a zero-sum game where m women win and men lose. This is very much about advancing everyone. And I think most men really understand that. Mm. We heard a moment ago about the difficulty with maybe that middle management mm. level, that even if you get the hearts and minds of the people at the top, there's resistance there. How do we deal with that? How do we get through You're that? right. The middle level of any organisation is where the culture sits. Those people are the keepers of a culture. They're the cultural ambassadors. If you want change, that's the level you need to work at. Um, so in terms of helping that group change, it's once again, I think, showing them that a, a different future um, maybe to the one that they envisaged is a future where they're going to not only play a part, but it's, it's a future that's going to benefit everyone. Now, you do that once again, either through the storytelling, either through changing the way people's performance is measured, um, through actually being quite strong about what 
behaviours are not tolerated. Because I go into so many organisations and they'll tell me, oh, we, you know, gender equality is critical to this organisation. And I say, well, can I ask you, how many people have you exited because either they didn't reach um, their performance indicators around gender diversity or they didn't exhibit behaviour which was aligned with that value? Most organisations will tell me that that never happens. Well, there's your answer. If, if, you know, if there's no action that's taken, if there are no consequences for not living um, the organisation's mantra around gender diversity, then people won't change. So you're saying take it out of policy or make it a, make it a real thing with consequences? Yeah, you need to absolutely take it out of a policy. That policy needs to be lived on the ground. Um, and in fact, that's one of the things that I saw in my pregnancy inquiry and return to work. You're worse off in a large organisation, which is interesting. What that tells me is you can have the best policies in the world. If they're not being lived on the ground, then change won't happen and discrimination will still thrive in those environments.